When you look at the pattern pieces, they look so tiny. You think, how on earth am I going to fit in there? Look at these amazing pockets. I think they look so nice. They've been top stitched with the twin needle. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And today is all about knit pants. The ones that you want to reach for and grab and wear all the time that also look put together. I'd be wanting to sew one for a really long time. And the one that ticks all the boxes is the flare leggings by Green Style Creations. Finally, it's been through the machine and I've made it. This is the third garment from my Perfect Fit Capsule Challenge that Green Star is running on their Facebook group and I joined a couple of weeks ago. I've shown you a color palette, it's only five garments, super, super doable. And now the third garment is the flare leggings. It's a pattern that you can make either capri length or full length. There are lots of optional features here. One of them is a small gas that you can sew. And believe it or not, I am actually sewing the pockets this time, yep. I'm sewing the pockets. I'm usually not a pocket person, but these pockets are perfect. They don't give you any extra bulk and they're extremely easy to put together and they look very nice. So why not? <laughs> And then for waistbands, this is where it gets really, really interesting. Waistbands A and B both finish in a V at the front, but waistband A is only one pattern piece. It's very long. You fold it wrong sides together and then you overlap it. Waistband B is different. There is a front and a back piece. You do have side seam on this waistband and you have inner and outer pieces for this waistband. So in total, it's four pattern pieces for that one. You can actually stack waistbands A and B together, like sew one, sew the other, and then put them together and then sew them onto the top of the legging. But I wouldn't recommend that unless your fabric is sort of lighter weight because you would have four layers of fabric in that waistband. At least with the fabric I've chosen, that would not have been very comfortable for me. Waistband C, is a regular curved waistband high rise for this one you have an outer waistband that you cut twice so it's the same in the front and the back and then the inner waistband is also the same piece but you cut one for the front and the back so it's also got four pieces waistband d would be the easiest one it's just a rectangle pretty tall it's a fold over yoga waistband now out of all these options which one did i choose i'm making the full length i'm making waistband a which is the one that crosses over and finishes in a v point and i'm also adding a little hack that i'll mention later on you need fabric that has at least 50 percent stretch both vertically and horizontally it's extremely important that your fabric stretches vertically as well when you look at the pattern pieces they look so tiny you think how on earth am i going to fit in there if you're comparing that to the size of pattern pieces designed for woven fabrics. When I look at the crotch length, I think, wow, that looks so small. If you take the finished garment and measure the whole crotch, it's gonna be considerably shorter than what your body measures. And that's because it's accounting for the fabric stretching vertically as well. So if you think you have a really nice fabric, but it doesn't have any vertical stretch, I would suggest you don't attempt it at all. It won't, you won't be able to get it past your knees. You won't be able to get it past your hips. It just won't fit. So just make sure your fabric will stretch horizontally and vertically. Now 50% is easy to determine. You take your piece of fabric and put it against a four inch reference, hold it firmly at the zero and stretch the fabric. If it stretches nice and comfortably up to six inches, that means it's stretching two inches further. That means it's got 50% stretch. Green Star always has a chart like this in their pattern. So if you print that page at 100% in your printer, you'll be able to do it. But I just find it easy to do on the cutting mat because it's right there and it can be something that you do really quickly. I would always prefer the athletic fabrics. Usually you'll find a mix of polyamide with spandex or polyester with spandex, nylon and spandex. You want spandex that's at least 10% or more just to have that stretch and recovery. It is a garment with negative ease, so spandex is really, really important for the garment to keep its shape and to stay close to your body and not start stretching out and deforming. Now, if you want your pants not for athletic wear, if you just want them for wearing out or lounging or something, you could use heavy cotton lycra as well. At least 10% spandex though. <laughs> I've made two flare leggings and I've chosen two different types of athletic knits. The first one was for my muslin. Now this fabric is pricey-ish, but not as pricey as the one I'd planned to use for my final version. This one is a little lighter. It's still very nice polyamide, polyamide spandex blend. You can see the composition on the screen and it's got perfect type of stretch, really nice feel on the skin. That's black, I wanted a basic. And then my main fabric is my best, best, best athletic knit I have in my stash. I purchased it specifically for this. The feel is so nice. It's got more spandex than the typical fabrics. It's got 14%. The stretch and recovery is amazing. The compression, the texture on the skin feels amazing. Bonjour. 
The man collecting rubbish bags just passed by and said, ah, Oh my gosh, what the heck is that? Okay, it's just like a huge bumblebee. Okay, that, that, that is what I mean about being on edge when I'm out here. I've mentioned before when I'm outside, I'm a little on edge about things that are going on. Anyway. <laughs> During these last couple of weeks that Green Star has been running the Perfect Fit Capsule, they've had all their patterns 25% off, but it's not directly discounted on the site if you go there. You need to use a coupon code. I'm not going to tell you what that coupon code is because you need to visit their blog post on their site for it. So I will leave that link down below so you can find the coupon code and get your patterns for 25% off. Maybe you want to get the flare leggings. Always find all the information in the description box of this video. I'm very detailed. I write dates. I write everything. I have all the links the link you see there is my affiliate link of course if you click through there and go and make your purchase I will get a commission back and I'm very grateful when you do that because it really really does support the work that I do here on YouTube so I just go from B to M and that will go up to a 57 inch waist and 62 inch hip now you won't just find a waist and a hip measurement here on the chart you'll find many more which is awesome you find the waist the hip the mid thigh and the calf and there's also a diagram showing you where to measure your thigh you know not everyone has the same proportion that all the measurements are going to fit into one size now you'll find a lot of files when you get your pattern and that's because there are three length options here. The petite has an inseam of 28 inches, the regular has an inseam of 31, and then the tall version, an inseam of 34 inches. It's not that it's the same pattern piece that just gets longer to make room for your legs. No, it's just totally separate pattern pieces. And I think that's really great because I think it's accounting for the drafting everywhere overall so that the knee reference on the pattern is at your knees you know the hips are at your hips so i think that's really great i chose the tall version although my inseam is not 34 inches my inseam is between the regular and the tall so i just printed out the tall and then i took off one and a half inches from the tall version about the sewing you use three eighths of an inch seam allowance you can sew the majority of the seams with your serger although i always go in and do some of the things with the sewing machine i had it in my mind that maybe the flare on the leggings was too much maybe or maybe not anyway that was what the muslin was for so that i could see and definitely i thought i wanted to bring them in a little bit on each side that means on the side seam and the inseam and that is super easy to do i had marked the knee reference that is on the pattern onto the fabric itself and it was actually at my knees and it was really easy you can see a diagram here the black line is the original flare and the red line coming in is from the knee reference all the way down just taking an inch off at the side seam and the inseam very easy adjustment and this basically just turns the leggings into a straight leg instead of being flare now if you like the flare go ahead and make them with the flare and if you want even more flare you could do that easy you could do that easily as well you can see a diagram here that shows you how you could do that and it would just be the inverse of what i did the black line is the original line from the knee reference just bring it out an inch at the side seam and the inseam taper it out in the sewing you will see my final version and i decided to do a little hack just a tiny little hack just for fun i wanted to do a little slit on the side seam i'm showing you how to do that and you can do that with any any pants as long as it's a straight leg quick mitered corners general construction let's hop into up close and so personal and see how this came together These are the main pieces for the flare leggings this is the back it's obviously the back because it's wider and it's got a longer crotch curve and that is the front over there i've shown you a diagram of how i decreased the flare at the bottom of the hem and took an inch away from each side from the knee down so you can see the leg is sort of straight down and because the leg is sort of straight down that's why i want to do this slit detail i wouldn't want to do the slit detail if i had the flare because it wouldn't hang right so i'll show you what's going on down there this is a hack you can do to any pant as long as the leg is straight like you see it right here basically this pattern uses three eighths of an inch and that's what you can see marked in chalk there i measured from the bottom three and a half inches up now the hem is going to be an inch and i wanted this to be an inch also so the original pattern would have been there on that line there so i just measured from where the seam allowance would be so that I had an inch there and that is the excess that you see. If I measured from here to there, I have an inch and I also have an inch at the hem. Basically the slit is going to be super little, just two and a half inches, nothing super dramatic, just a little detail on the side. And I have the same thing done to the front leg. Now I don't cut this as a re total rectangle because it's hard to serge. I'm going to be serging these separately and it's easier to serge when you have a little curve there and then you 
go down like that. So I'll basically be sewing up to there, up to that point there, and then the rest will be open. And because of the width of the slit and the hem allowance is the same, I'll be able to do some really quick mitered corners and it's going to be super neat. So the difference with these pants is that I'm not going to be sewing them together. I'll be sewing them separately and I'll be using the sewing machine to do the side seams. This is the front pattern piece and I am using the optional pockets for this one. If you weren't using the pockets, then your piece would go up to here and it would complete the hip area. You have a little pokey bit here because it's been trued so that you can fold this in like that and top stitch it down and that will be the pocket opening like that so when you fold it down you'll get a smooth edge there these are the easiest types of pockets it's just one piece basically after sewing that down you just place this behind the pant both of the fabrics wrong sides up and then you just sew it down and that's how you end up getting into your pocket this is the type of waistband I've chosen for mine there are many types of waistbands and I have sewn this waistband before with a sundial it's just one piece cut on the fold what you do is fold these wrong sides together you have the fold on the top and then you have this slant here and this slant here that you overlap you base that together right there and that is the waistband that you sew onto your leggings I have shown in detail how to do this in the sundial leggings video so you can go to that video to see how this is done this is the front piece and this is where the little pocket opening is going to go so I'm just going to quickly serge this edge you could leave it raw if you wanted to but I just like keeping things neat and I'll do that on both of these front pieces Another thing I'm going to do is serge the edge of this pocket. I'm going to serge the whole thing, the curved edge and also the side seam. This is because my side seams are going to be serged separately. They're not going to be together with this. So that's why I'm going to just do the whole thing. All this serging is optional, of course. You know, you could leave it raw. I really like the neat looking side with a serge up. Not like the fabric will start tearing apart if you don't serge it. This is my front leg. I've just serged this edge. And I'm going to fold it towards the wrong side. My fabric is pretty much the same on both sides. So I've marked my wrong side with chalk and because I'll be top stitching from the right side I want to keep this secure I'm gonna be doing some hand basting I'm folding this in by half an inch this fabric is really heavyweight it's got a lot of spandex it's got great recovery I'm not concerned that these pockets are going to start stretching out and collapsing so when you fold this in you can see this little edge becomes nice and smooth here on the side seam I'm going to top stitch with a twin needle and after doing that then I can go and serge the side seams from the front okay that looks neat the zigzag formed underneath with the twin needle is going to lay out the stretch and this is what's going to be the pocket entrance now from here down I have the side seam all raw and now I can go and serge it or clean it all up and I'll be doing that with both front legs this is what I mean about how easy it is to have a little curve instead of a sharp angle there so I'll repeat this with the other front leg and I'll also serge the seams of the back the side seams of the back are pretty straightforward it's just basically a straight seam with a little slit detail at the bottom okay this is one of the front legs this pocket entrance has already been sewn this side seam has already been serged we have the pant with the wrong sides up you can see the chalk marks and now we take our pocket also with the wrong sides up and we are just going to align this here so just make sure it aligns on this line and on the side seam you can put pins if you want I'm gonna be sewing from the right side of the fabric it just makes more sense for me to hand baste this I've already done it on the other one so I'll show you this is the other pant leg it's all hand basted now you can see the surged edge I made sure to hand base right along that inner edge very neatly all the way around this hand basting as a guide and I'm gonna put my twin needle right in the middle of that basting so I'll have one needle on this side one needle on that side and that will make sure I'm catching this right on the edge this edge of the hip I'm just gonna keep that hand basting there and right on top there I'm just gonna keep it there for later this is where you put your hand in and you have a pocket there is the hand basting you can see that it's very visible it replaces a chalk or anything it's the best thing because it marks it and holds it in place and I'm gonna go carefully making sure that the basting stitch is right between the two needles okay, so this one can come flying off and that's how that looks it's super neat it's gonna allow stretch remember these are fitted pants you're gonna have negative V's, so it'll be fine now I've placed a back leg and a front leg right sides together align the side seams this is what we're gonna sew now here are both legs side seams pin and now we're ready to sew I'm going to be using a shallow zigzag for mine I have that little slit detail at the bottom and I just want this seam open that's why I'm using a sewing machine I'll be using a 3 8 seam allowance it's a really long straight seam if you are just sewing a regular side with no details then I would definitely be serging this here we are getting to the bottom where we see the slit detail and I have a little mark up to where I'm gonna sew this is how the little slit is going to be inside the whole seam will be open look what 
what I've seen in ready to wear and in some patterns is that they have you surge everything and up to a certain point you snip and then you separate this and I really don't like that so because I'm sewing and I can do what I like I'm just gonna have the seam open like this this is the back crotch that is the front crotch here is the other leg and I'm going to place them right sides together after we've aligned that all we need to sew now is the back crotch this is the back crotch I'm sewing it directly on the serger and I'm perfectly fine with that and then I'm just going to repeat with the front crotch it's the exact same thing it's just a smaller seam now that the side seam is sewn and both crotch seams all we need to do is open this up and all that's left open here are the inseams so this is going to be super easy just align them and I'm going to sew them with the serger like this this and like that. This inseam is a very very long seam, very straight, nothing complex to see right here. After sewing the inseam we have the bottom and it's still not surged, you can see the slit here. So at this point I can surge the bottom and then I can get to work with doing the mitered corners and hemming the pants. I have shown mitered corners before but this is a really quick refresher because the amount of fabric we're folding from the hem and the side is the same, one inch, then the method is really straightforward. All you do is multiply the one inch by two or whatever distance you're doing, just double that. In this case it's two inches. So from the corner I'm gonna measure in two inches and do a little mark there. From this corner also two inches, do a little mark right there and then get a ruler. I'm just using my seam gauge because it was the fastest thing I could find and just draw a diagonal line here from that dot to that dot there. Then what you do is fold this right sides together, you have this tip right there, you align that dot with that dot there and you have your line already marked and that is what you need to sew. This can be done in only a few minutes and I think it's really neat and you can just use a straight stitch for this. Just leave a quarter of an inch there and now we can flip this right sides out and we get the mitered corner for this little slit. There's just four of these to do so there's three more. You can see that from the straight edge of the hem I've started with the twin needle there and I finished the same on the other side. Now I don't want to do this little slit area with the twin needle because I can't pivot properly and I do a type of fake pivot sometimes with the twin needle but I usually reserve that for prints where you won't really see the detail but this is a solid and I think it would look ugly if I do the fake pivot. So I've done it like that and I've got these two threads through a big needle and I'm just going to push these threads back and knot them. Um, then I'm going to sew the slit down with a straight stitch and I think it's going to look much neater. Now it's hard to show black of course, this is my muslin, I've got the C waistband which is just a rounded curved waistband, it's got an inner waistband and an outer waistband. The reason there's a separate piece for the inner waistband is because it's slightly shorter and you can see that the seam rolls into the inside there so you get a really clean smooth look there. And a nice wide waistband that gives you a lot of tummy support, it feels amazing on. And then these were so easy to sew, I just sewed them straight on the serger. I have a twin needle hem. They really achieved their purpose of letting me know if I needed to do any fitting adjustments. Turns out that the fit was perfectly fine. I was able to confirm how much of the flare I wanted to remove with these. And now I have an amazing pair of pants that's so comfortable to wear. Now these both leggings have been styled not as active wear for now because they could be for whatever, they don't need to be active wear. So that's how you see this one styled. This is my muslin for the flare leggings from Green Style. This is a tall file and I've chosen the curved waistband. It's super comfortable, it's nice and wide. I find the fit is great. The only thing I did after sewing them was taper the legs in slightly, both on the inseam and the side seam. Very satisfied with these black staple suplex pants. The fabric is amazing and they'll work for any occasion. This is my final pair in the blue, it's so nice. Look, this amount of puckers you can see there is normal, it's just that the waistband is a little smaller in this area, but then when you put it on it looks really smooth, it looks fine. Here you can see this is waistband type A, it's just one piece, the fold is on the top and there is an overlap and a V right there, a V 
the point look at these amazing pockets i think they look so nice they've been top stitched with the twin needle fit really close to the leg there's no bulk they do have a medium size i suppose you could make that bigger if you wanted it fits my whole hand look i'm never gonna put anything in there i just wanted to film it for you and i think they look pretty but it's not like i'm gonna use them you know at the back it's just the back crotch seam and then just long long seams all the way down to the leg special detail i have here is the slit i think it's so pretty it's not too long it'll just help the pant fall over the shoes really nicely and, and look more straight at the bottom without crumpling up so i have a one inch hem and i added a little bit to the width there to have one inch there also that is the only reason i sewed the side seams like you saw that i searched everything separately that i sewed it on the sewing machine so i could press it open and it was just because of the slit if i didn't have the slit i would have just sewn it all on the serger like I did the muslin. The muslin was sewn all on the serger. What can I say? This fabric is amazing. I love the color. It will fit into my capsule collection really, really well. I will have a finale video for this collection where I have all the five garments styled together in different combinations, so don't worry. But to see this one on, I've just paired it with a colorful blouse and I've styled it in a non-athletic way. These are my flare leggings from Green Style in a really heavy blue athletic knit. I love this tone. I used the toe file and I also tapered the leg in a tad the same as I did with my muslin. I used the V crossover waistband option that is super pretty and these pockets are so easy to sew I really couldn't skip them. It is actually the correct rise length for me. I've done something extra just for fun on the side seams at the hem and here you can see what I've done. It's a little slit and I love that, gives it something extra and now I really want to make these in more colors they're gonna serve me so well and I'm really happy with my make What can I say? I would love to make these in more colors. I would like to have like a dark navy one for sure. I'm on the hunt for the same type of fabric. I'd love to make one in a brown tone of sorts. I would not hesitate to make it in a print also. A really pretty print that I could wear with solids would also be amazing. So I think I'm not done with this pattern at all. I love it. It's so nice. It's just what I wanted and I feel the result was amazing. Don't forget to check out Green Style's blog post to get your coupon codes. You can get your flag leggings for 25% off. It's all linked down below. I didn't film the waistband details on purpose because I have already filmed it. It's exactly the same technique. Check out the video linked right here to hop over there to see all about the waistband. I'm off to finish my sports bra. Super excited. See you soon.